It's a heat wave, and I've foolishly decided to climb a Lake District fell in order to survey a little known hill fort and have my first go at wild cooking. What could possibly go wrong? A little bit different this week. I've been undertaking some pretty hefty projects of late for this channel and I fancied a little bit of a change. So we are having a bit of a heat wave here in the northwest of England and uh, it's going to be winter any time now. So I thought I'd get the old summer hat out and we're going to do a hike. We're going to get to a hill fort and if all goes to plan, you're going to get to see me having my first ever attempt at some wild cooking. So join me. I don't know why I went that way, it's this way. Okay, so this is where we are. We're in the very northern tip of the Lake District. And that up there is Carrick Fell with our Iron Age Hill Fort. And that's our destination today. I've never done any wild cooking before. I've obviously cooked outside, but I've never packed it all into a rucksack, basically. Hiked off somewhere. I have, of course, had the benefit of being entertained, cooked for by Tweedy Outdoors. And I'm not saying that this exercise will be in any way up to the standards that we see on Tweedy's channel. I'm also a bit out of shape. Although I stopped working, I don't seem to have any spare time for hiking at the moment. The channel is absorbing me a bit. So the idea of this is I combine the two things. We create some content, show you something interesting from prehistory, and uh, I get some much needed exercise. The fort on Carrick Fell is definitely Iron Age. So it was in use sometime between 400 BC up to the first century AD, but not much else is known about it. It's a univallet fort and is quite typical for the Northwest of England in that it has uh, stone ramparts as opposed to uh, mounds of earth. One day the old antiquarian admits that it must be said Climbed up and in a heat wave Antiquities were in his head And one day that old antiquarian Used to climb at temperate Ascended a lake district mountain In search of a hill fort Univallet one day, that old antiquarian, motivated by Brigantian wars, decided to cook on said mountain, inspired by Tweedy Outdoors. Phew! I hope they've managed to do something in the studio, in the edit, to uh, make that climb that I've just undertaken in some way painful for you guys. Anyhow, I've stopped for a breather. Don't worry about my stuff, it's over there. Uh, we're nearing, well, we're not nearing the summit yet of Carrick Fell, but behind me there, you could see the natural rock started to appear, which would have clearly added to the defensiveness of the hill fort, along with the steepness of the slope. Anyhow, I'm just gonna, Take a little breather here and then we'll uh, recommence, I'll recommence the climb. Good old Wainwright describes the fort on Carrick Fell as a necklace of stones. And as you approach the summit, the natural rock appears en masse. Gabbro Rock, unique here in this part of the Lake District. The name Carrick Fell is probably Britonic abounding in rocks something like that and oh by the way if you enjoyed that singing earlier do let me know in the comments down below i'm sure i could make a long player available and launch a, a merch store or something uh, as well as folk i do country garage drum and bass drill like whatever you like anything for money and attention anyhow here we are at the western gate to the fort Let's do a quick uh, survey of this little known Lake District uh, fort. It's been looked at, surveyed a couple of times in the last century or so, but no excavations uh, at all. Located on the summit of Carrick Fell, it's around 640 metres above sea level. 
and it is considered to be a large univallet enclosure, oval shaped. So there's no ditches to worry about cleansing here. Uh, it's just a significant stone rampart. And looking at the Google Earth imagery, uh, I'm immediately questioning this Iron Age date, which I carried up as a presumption uh, as I climbed up the, the fell. It looks almost a bit like a Neolithic causeway enclosure, possibly. There are two lightly Bronze Age cairns now used as mountain shelters, as is the modern way. And the site is defined by this impressive tumbled dry stone wall, two to seven meters thick, with surviving evidence of construction uh, visible in a couple of places. There's a medieval shieling built uh, from the ramparts and a nolloc, to use a word that's been coined by one of our viewers, marking the highest point. And uh, on the occasion of our visit, it was a bit of a haven for flying ants. Somebody called Hog in the 1970s considered there to be two original entrances in the south and the west. But I quite like the look of this northern one here too. As I say, never excavated, although there have been some traces of a palisade and a ditch uh, in the extensive interior, sort of possibly. Maybe that was abandoned due to the con ongoing concerns and costs relating to ditch cleansing. Naturally, the site has been proposed as a last holdout for the Brigantes against the Romans, but aren't they all? Uh, but I'm never actually that convinced that their territory extended this far west anyhow. And as ever, we have the question, what was this place for? Approach from all sides is tough and likely to induce inappropriate singing and or extreme fatigue. There's no water supply up here, so it's difficult to imagine that anybody actually lived here. If it were ever to be excavated, I'd wager they'd find some Langdale axe roughouts up here. And uh, what better way to weaken the resolve of your customers by making them trudge up here to the showroom before closing the deal. I imagine that you lot have just seen a uh, section all about the hill fort with a voiceover. Uh, while that's been happening, I've been sort of cooling down, which is uh, a mercy because my shirt was uh, uh, inappropriate for YouTube transmission. And I've set up our camp for what hopefully will be a really successful first wild cooking session. Come with me. Third time lucky with this take. Apologies for my shambolic appearance. I hope you understand. It has been about 25 today, but it's getting a bit chilly now. Now, um, I had to buy everything, literally everything for this today. So I've had to make a few compromises in terms of uh, the ingredients, but I've already done the bit where I chopped up the halloumi and I chopped up some chilies. So I've done all of that bit. I've loaded up the uh, stove with some methylated spirits. It's a brand new stove, very traditional. Can't remember what it's called right now. I'll put it uh, on the screen. But I think uh, after all of that, it's time for me to have a drink. So our drink of choice today is some uh, Bolt Maker. I was gonna do some wine, but um, I decided to go for that. I just saw it and it took my fancy. Uh, hopefully that's okay. I'm actually using my Swiss army knife today, which is good. Doesn't get used very often. There we go. It's got a sort of a plastic uh, goblet. Oh, I'm not meant to anymore, am I? There we go. Not a bad colour, is it? Anyway, cheers. Oh, it's called... Oh, it's called a Trangia. This is called a Trangia. Apparently they've been made since the 1920s, so that obviously immediately appealed to me. Right, the first thing we need to do is we need to cook the halloumi. I don't know what this uh, recipe is called, by the way. It's sort of just made up. Got some matches somewhere. There they are. Right, so just need to light this. It's a methylated spirits uh, burner. I'll pop that on there. I chose methylated spirits rather than gas. I just uh, felt that it was possibly slightly more traditional, and I like traditional. Now, I've lugged this up this mountain here. It's 100% um, Italian extra virgin olive oil. I've realised now that um, I'm going to have a nightmare getting it back because the, it had a sort of a plastic seal on it. Yes, I can feel some heat. It's not very straight. I'm 
I can straighten that up a bit. You know, and I do have to take my hat off to people that do this on YouTube. It's not just the sort of sheer outdoorsiness of the whole thing and all the prep for that. You've got to sort of somehow work out how you're gonna, how you're gonna film it as well. Now, as this is brand new, I probably should have uh, cleaned it, shouldn't I? But I'm not gonna get anything toxic off of uh, Swedish aluminium, am I? Right, I'm gonna get the uh, halloumi. We need to fry that off uh, first. Oh, I can already tell that if Tweedy was doing this, it wouldn't be making that noise. Oh, it's really, really hot. I mean, it wouldn't be wild camping, would it, if it wasn't a little bit burnt? I've got to stir a thing there. Look, not totally hopeless. I mean, so far, so good. It's quite a nifty little thing, isn't it? Feel free to let me know in the comments what you would do to be better than me. I know you will. All I, all I really know is this halloumi needs to be brown because it's going in sort of at the last minute with the main dish. I bet you can't uh, contain your excitement, can you? Anything for likes and subscribes, eh? See, some of it is, some of it isn't cooked and some of it is burnt. I might turn that GoPro off because it's going to be embarrassing how burnt that all is. To save that being any further burnt, I'm going to get that off now. So that can wait in there. I don't think you're going to be able to see me properly, are you, with the camera over there? And it's very important that you can see me. Time to recharge the goblet. Cheers, my good fellows and uh, fellow S's. Okay, so next, what we need to do is we need to add in the chilies that I chopped earlier. Now, this is called lazy garlic. I don't know why, but uh, Mrs. WC 21 UK Productions Limited swears by it. And it, as ever, with regard to anything to do with cooking, everything I know, I know because of her. Hello, darling, if you're watching. Okay, so next we've got some Chinese five spice, which we'll pop that uh, in there. I don't know whether just to tip that or is that going to be too risky? I'll splash it all over and we'll let that simmer away for a little bit. Infuse the flavours, apparently. I've just checked my notes off camera. I actually got notes from Mrs. WC21 UK Productions Limited. I was meant to put soy sauce in at the same time as that last bit, but uh, it won't make any difference, will it? Okay, I think we're ready for the next uh, stage, which is the pre-cooked halloumi can now go back in. Shall I just try a little bit of that halloumi, see what it's like? Well, it tastes done to me. Time for the final ingredient, which is the noodles. It says tear there, but uh, <laughs> good job I've got the old Swiss army knife. What is it that Tweedy always says at this sort of stage? Terrible entertainment, isn't it? So we whack those noodles in. Oh, you must remind me to say that thing at the end of this video. What is it that all the wild campers say? Leave no trace. Well, I'm learning stuff. Use the heat burner controller thing when you're cooking your initial halloumi so it doesn't go all burnt. Don't leave the aluminium handle attached unnecessarily to the frying pan because it will burn your hand. So lessons learned. Now this should have had something like ground nut oil or pine nut oil on it a little bit at the end, but I couldn't get that anywhere. I actually went to one, two, three different locations trying to find all the bits for this. And that was the thing I couldn't get. So I'm just gonna chuck a little bit of extra olive oil over it towards the end. One thing I was wondering with the heat, if, um, does halloumi go wrong? Can you get poisoned by halloumi? I'm paranoid today, aren't I? I'm worrying about the pan, I'm worrying about the halloumi. I think I've probably controlled that temperature better in the second sort of part of this woeful exercise in uh, cooking. Wild luncheon. I think we're nearly ready. Okay, don't forget to say that thing that we have to say at the end of the video. You know what I mean, you know what I'm talking to about. I have tried 
to sort of turn the halloumi over a couple of times to show the less burnt sides, but yeah, who gives us stuff? Right, I'm just going to pop a little bit of this on. I think that's about done. You just want to know whether I've cooked something edible or not, don't you? Let's, uh, let's give it a go. He's an Anglo-Saxon right. charter man Finding ditches and dikes whenever he can But it's not Hello, the period that engages And he's not it's really hot and properly cooked. dark ages It's the signposts they're in that get him skittish About the times of the Romano British And even better to the point next that Noodles When charters reveal things Welsh and Celtic Hot and properly cooked Excuse me, madam Excuse me. Although I say it myself, I think I've done quite well. I'm going to turn the camera off now. You don't need to watch me eat everything, do you? And then uh, I'll come back to you in a bit, as they say. And don't forget to tell me that thing. Cheers. Well, that has been a great success, even though I say it myself. I hope I'm not coming across as big-headed. I really did expect it to be unedible, or is it inedible? But there's probably an overlay showing you that I ate every last bit of it. It was really, really tasty. And I've enjoyed the whole experience. Filming it adds a bit of a dimension to it. And I'm going to have a go at this without cameras soon. Sorry about that. We've seen a good hill fort. We've seen some great scenery. And uh, you've watched me make a fool of myself trying to be a sort of a wild cooker. Oh, what's that thing you've got to remind me? Whoa, OK. Leave no trace. I would definitely say that, and I'll put it on the screen. A lot of them do that as well, don't they? Well, they certainly had a good viewpoint from their hill fort. I, I doubt you'll be able to see it, but there's a beautiful view of the Solway Firth over there. We've got this sort of lowland plain stretching between the end of these Lake District mountains and uh, the Solway Firth. Somewhere over there, there's an amazing uh, Roman road, actually, and a whole series of Roman forts that uh, effectively were a continuation of Hadrian's Wall, but uh, that's a story for another day and another gazette. Well, I enjoyed that as a diversion from the normal sort of fare on the channel. I hope it was okay for you. I know we normally do sort of slightly more meaty stuff and perhaps a few more high jinks than we've had this week, but I just needed a little bit of a break from all of that. I hope that was okay. Sorry about all the profuse sweating. It has been really hot. I'm now gonna head off. I know if I was a proper outdoorsy YouTuber, I'd stay to see the sunset, but I really want a cup of tea. So I'll leave it there, like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. I'm sure the ending's gonna be fine because they always are, aren't they? On outdoorsy sort of videos. So goodbye. I assume that's there just for the, a closing shot. For God's sake, that's enough. Ah, missed it. <coughs> you can call this an afterword, if you like, or a warning to the curious, but it's the next day and I've been up all night. I've not been very well, basically. I, I can't believe there was anything wrong with my cooking. Everything was piping hot. And that's what they say that you need to ensure, isn't it? It must have been a heat stroke or something like that. I've been texting uh, Tweedy Outdoors to see if he could give me any insights as to what went wrong. But, oh, hang on. 